everyone. Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. This is episode 284. And we've got a really powerful panel here, folks, uh, for the present moment. It's me and John. <laughs> but um, hopefully some of the other panelists will be joining us. Um, maybe they were partying last night or something, I don't know. Um, John, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? Sure thing. We're keeping it OG today. And uh, my name is John Locke, uh, former co-host uh, WP Tonic and currently uh, SEO for manufacturing firms. That's it. Those manufacturing firms need help, don't they, John? Lots. We've got to get those exports. We've got to help America become great again, haven't we? Uh, America. Because it's always great. We're just going to make it a little bit greater. That's exactly. All. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm the founder of WP Tonic. We're a support maintenance company, only spe specialized with WordPress. And we have an emphasis on membership and learning management system websites. So, um, like I say, hopefully some of the other panel will be dragging themselves to join us. Um, so, on to the first story, John. Uh, um, Themes review changes places more emphasis on theme authors. Um, what's your thoughts about that one, John? Well, I mean, definitely the, the uh, uh, there's definitely been a lot of controversy over the past year about the theme review team and uh, not the team itself, but some of the themes uh, that get in there. Uh, uh, I know there, there is a controversy uh, a while back. Oh, you're breaking up, John. This is going to be a good... Oops, he's breaking up. Naming, folks. basically tricking the system. Living down, having uh, a malicious... Uh-oh. So the the bar to uh, get your theme into the repo, the theme repo is getting a little bit high. Uh, higher you got to have it secure can't have uh illegal or dishonest or uh things in your theme or php errors not sure like, why most people want to get their theme in the repo in the first place is make you upgrade to like a paid version of it but yeah we'll we'll see what happens well, you know, it all kind of. Oh, here's um, we've got another guest joining us. We've got Adam. Yeah, yeah, we've got Adam in the house. Uh, um, hey guys, is my audio working? Yes, it's fine. You're, yeah. a, bit, Lots. you're, you're a bit bright, Adam. I, bit I know I'm gonna fix it right now. I got all kinds of technical issues, but as long as the audio sounds good, I guess we, we can survive, right? We can Powder's survive. In the house. We can survive anything, Adam. We can survive. We got the strength, Adam, and mm -hmm. we've got another of our great regular panelists joining us. Sally, would you like to introduce yourself quickly, Sally? Uh, certainly. My name is Sally Getch. I am the WP fangirl and the organizer of the East Bay WordPress meetup in Oakland, California. Right, Sally, we were talking about this theme story, number one on my extensive list with your help. Uh, yes, well, I, I, we would have had an even more extensive list, except apparently the you know five extra links I, I added uh, yesterday never transmitted. So, oh dear, I, I found them sitting in my uh, in a oh. little chat box on on <coughs> Slack this morning. Um, so uh, yes, theme things. Um, uh, this is an interesting move. I think it's it's probably in the nature of an experiment. You know, they're they're trying to set it up so that people can get their themes approved. Uh, for the WordPress repo more quickly by doing, you know, more automation and, and less human intervention. Uh, and then they're going to kind of try to, you know, push as, as many things as possible back onto the theme author if it's, you know, discovered that something uh, uh, doesn't uh, comply with the guidelines or, or is otherwise an issue. And, you know, it could work or not. Uh, it, and so we'll, I think we'll see whether, you know, generates more problems uh, than it solves. Uh, I think that's a good synopsis. I think something had to be done. I'm not sure this is going far enough. Um, what do you reckon, Adam? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just so focused on fixing my video. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, 
Oh, are we talking about the uh, theme, yes. uh, the theme guideline changes? It's the, so actually, I haven't fully processed that. Let me guess: they lightened it versus strengthening it, right? They made it easier versus harder to get your theme in, so that they can remove some of the uh, roadblocks. That is the idea. If uh, I read the Sally, if, uh, your, your audio. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> The, uh, is, is, am I not transmitting? No, I can hear you. I can hear you. Maybe it's me. I'm sorry, guys. Technical issues. I'll fix these. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, right. So, um, <clears throat> yes, it's it, 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 the actual uh, discussion on the Make WordPress themes. Uh, it says, you know, we know that queue time is around three months. We have quite a small number of active theme reviewers at the moment. And even when a ticket is being reviewed, the review process itself can take pretty long to complete. And the change is based on moving burden from reviewers' shoulders to the theme authors and making theme authors more responsible. From today, reviewers can check mainly the following issues to pass the review. Security, licensing, malicious or egregious stuff, and content creation. Um, and says, however, although these are the points to pass the theme review, theme authors are expected to follow the guidelines required and recommended as you know set out in the theme developers. Uh, <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, handbook and and uh, uh, the responses seem to be mostly fairly uh, uh, positive, uh, especially I suspect from people who have been involved in reviewing the themes in the past. I don't know how you do this, Sally. That that cat. I don't know what you're feeding it, but there we go. It's a. It, um, you have to watch this, folks. She's got a very loving cat. <laughs> It's very persistent. Multitasking. Multitasking. <laughs> Multitasking. Yes, this is ADD Kitty. I mean, I've gotten kind of used to it. And, of course, I don't have to see it while she's doing it. <laughs> I'm not looking at the... No so, no so let me get this straight. They're basically saying, hey, theme authors that are submitting, just follow the rules and we're going to, you know, it's on you to follow the rules and what we're going to make it easier to get everything in. But you just follow the rules. Is that pretty much what you're just saying said it's pretty much it it's like well we're going to check for the things that would cause really serious problems we expect you to follow the rest of the guidelines and if somebody you know reports that you are not following the guidelines and we check and see you know we will you know uh, delist your theme until you fix it um, see that's where the problem is they don't check we, they don't check those reports i've reported a million things they they don't have the bandwidth for that you know the real thing is that they need to do is they need to charge people if you're going to put your theme in you got to pay like 200 or 250 dollars for it to be reviewed and some of that money go into some kind of a fund to actually hire someone to to process when people are telling them legitimate things via, you know, their rep they, then they have the weakest reporting system, a uh, 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 process of reporting an issue. It's like via email. I mean, like, what the heck? No, no, they lost all, you know, but they're really nice people and no, 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 no. Let me like jump in on that. Um, they're not so nice because here's what they're doing. It's volunteers. So who's going to volunteer to be a theme reviewer? One guess. I'm asking you guys a real question. Who's going to volunteer to do this? Theme um, authors. <laughs> They're competitors. So what do they do? Some guy is uh, doing really good. Oh, we're going to cause trouble for them, and that happens. Well, you well, yeah, all right, fair enough. Uh, you vote. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> no, no, let's go for it. No, you know, no. After the Go Daddy, it was it was Go Daddy, wasn't it? Was it Code Daddy that, you know, that incident where they, you know, they're giving loads of money and suddenly they got their theme in in like an hour? An hour. They got, you know, it lost the whole, the whole frigging thing lost total credibility as far as I was concerned. It was just a debacle and it was never answered to my satisfaction. Um, and I, I've been, you know, I've been going on about this for ages that, you know, if you've got a premier, a premier theme, and you want it, you want it in, you know, the depository. There's no problem, but you you go through a separate process, and you have to pay for that process, and you get a, a kind of like a five star rating because you met all the requirements, and it goes in, and you separate free from Premier. You cannot have a free linked 
to upsell. It's either free or you go through the premier process. And that's the end of the story. And then how you rate and publicize those um, premier ones is a, another total other discussion, isn't it? Which, um, good luck to them, that's all I've got to say, because it's been a, a continuous um, source of controversial discussion, the dark side of WordPress, blah, 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 isn't it? What do you reckon, John? Go and mute yourself. Okay. Yeah, I know that there is a, like I said before, there is a controversy uh, or like last year where, you know, people were naming their theme after something that would already be like popular on theme for us. So they'd instantly uh, numbers and they'd go right to the top of the popular um, you know, I know people on the theme review team and like some of them are good people. I, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are broken, um, even with good people on, on the team. Uh, and, and like Adam said, you know, it might make more sense to, you know, pay some of these people instead of just expecting like everybody in the WordPress ecosystem to volunteer their time to keep things running. It just, uh, it, it's just getting to the point where that doesn't make sense anymore. No, it's just got too big and there's too much money involved in all this, isn't it? Yeah, and, and doesn't it make sense that if you're going to have a theme reviewer, it shouldn't be someone who has, what is the phrase, a horse in the game or uh, whatever? I mean, the, the, the very people that are reviewing these themes are the ones that are competing with the people that submitted those well, themes. I'm not it makes no I'm, sense. Let me, let me intervene here a little bit. Um, there's 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 an element of truth in what you're saying, but I think you're taking it. I think some of the people in the theme um, review group are very, um, I know a couple of them and um, they're, they're decent people. Um, um, but on the other hand, what you've just stated, I, I, I agree. I think that's also going. I just think you're you're taking it to the extreme, Adam. <laughs> okay. Well, I would agree on the plug-in side of things. Okay. I agree on the plug-in side of things uh, because you're not like just because two people have plugins, it's you're not competing against each other. But a theme is a theme. Every theme is competing against each other, and I'm sure there are some decent people in there. But if you look at look at the way that they attack some of the top themes for like baloney stuff the problem is this the rules are not applied equally no exactly you, you well, that's, that's the problem so so you can't yeah you can't help but feel like if you're one of the top you have one of the top themes and they're just coming after you and there's themes above you and below you uh including the person reviewing it as a theme just below you it's it's hard to not come to the conclusion that yeah. you know it's not equally being handed down okay so so that is a completely fair criticism but the question is if you're not somebody who develops themes how well are you going to do at reviewing themes it's actually very, very, very valid. Yes, absolutely. Um, which goes back to the point that there should be some paid submission there process. Paid. I mean, this is a commercial venture. Yeah. Well, this is the whole problem. You've got to the crux of it, Adam. I feel which is the crux of it is it's a commercial. There's people making millions and millions and millions of dollars from this. And you're utilizing a system that which is totally incapable of dealing with the reality of the present moment and they just won't frigging do anything about it apart from what they've just done which is laughable i'm sorry it doesn't deal with any of the major issues but it is what it is and i wish them well and this will this discussion we'll be having the same discussion if this show is still around this round table around next year um i'm sure i'm sure we're going to be discussing the same freaking topic again because the, the these these changes aren't going to work because they're not dealing with the fundamental problem right it's as simple as that. On to the next story. It's my show. It's my show, isn't it? So I can do that, can't I? I have the power. Um, 
a new story. I put it. I put it in the Slack channel. Um, I found this one. Um, I thought it was quite interesting. Google fights businessman's attempt to raise his conviction links. Um, basically, what this is a story in the UK, where basically they. Um, Fundamentally, it's a bit different to the US. If you've served a, a, a sentence and you've been paroled or you've served the sentence, if you apply for jobs and that, you don't actually have to put down you've got a previous conviction. But also, um, there was a new law brought in um, saying that um, you should be able to re remove, um, ask um, companies to remove anything online about previous conviction um, that you've served and you've been paroled, well, blah, blah, blah. And so this business man in the UK, he, he kept asking um, Google, because they, they, um, every time you Google this guy, um, a, um, a case comes up, which he w had no part of even. He was just a business partner, but it was to do with Freud. And he, every time he did a Google, every time I met him, he kept, Everybody asked him the same question because I googled him. So yeah. they are. Um, the, he's asked, he asked politely Google to remove it. And guess what reply he got? The normal Google reply: "Fuck off." Uh, um, um, basically, that, wait, he he got a reply. Yeah, he even got a reply, but you know it was a polite fo. Uh, um, as always from Google, that's what always you get from these parasites uh, um so um but they've got this new law and i think he's won his case so they're gonna have to remove this article you know he's gonna he's gonna be blacked off the web what, what, what do you <laughs> don't you have the don't you have the right in the e if you're an eu yeah, citizen that's, that's coming the right yeah. to what's that called it was like two years ago what was it called the right to the right to be, be forgotten, forgotten. Is, is, is what this is. Yes, I was curious about, given that that's an EU law, uh, how that applies. I mean, it looks like this started a while ago, so so it's probably okay. But if Brexit is complete, do, would laws like that mm -hmm. uh, apply in the UK? Don't know, we're pressed, you know, we're leaving the EU, we're going on our little way, aren't we? You know, blah, 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 I don't know what's happening. But I, th I thought it was just an interesting story is that um, the reality is, because um, how are we going to deal with all this stuff on the internet about ourselves? Because um, a lot of it, um, especially if you become an, a notable figure, a lot of it will be nonsense, won't it? Because anybody can publish anything and say anything about you. You know, you have got the right to sue them, but anybody that knows anything, the only point in suing somebody is if they've got any money to sue them. And then you've got to have the resources to sue them in the first place. So, um, but I suppose in a way, um, the normal way this is handled is that if somebody's saying something really factually wrong about you and it's on a website, you normally approach the hosting provider and you provide evidence. And most hosting providers will not want to get into a bad situation. And if you can prove something's incorrect, they will remove it. Am I right about that, Adam? I don't think so. I think no. it's an uphill battle to get anything removed uh, because what you're doing is you're having sites with the intention of, of – harming people on a mass scale in this way and then evading the uh, responsibility, kind of like Yelp can say, I'm not responsible for the information that people are putting on our website. And the, it, the, the biggest offender in this is ripoff report where you i'm sure everyone's heard of this uh, website where it's a guy who you can't even find him like legally you can't sue him because you can't find him he's just evading and it's an extortion racket where anyone can go and fill out some kind of a ripoff report normally it's not a big deal right the problem is Google ranks ripoff report like number one and number two like and it's like 
a uphill battle to get that push down, or you could pay them, I think, like five or six thousand dollars to review the ripoff report, and then now you, you know, you're you're having to come out of pocket. It's just extortion. It's just it's just the wild, wild west side of the internet, and it's really sad that people get caught up in this. You know, I actually feel for. I have a heart for people that did some kind of wrong in their life, went to jail, paid a steep price. Now they're out and they're just the, the, the chips are stacked against them, even if they were good people. You know what I mean? The chips are stacked. When, when someone can put your name in, the, in Google, not even have to go to LexisNexis or some online database, Google and find out the bad things that have happened in your life and the bad decisions you made. It's a rough world out there. You're, the chips are stacked against you. I tell you, in agreement with you, Adam, because, you know, you're a younger guy or woman and you're in with the wrong crowd and um, you're influenced by people that are not your friends, really, don't mean you really well, but you think they're your friends, your buddies, whatever. You get in the wrong crowd, you do stuff, and you pay, like you say, a high price for really stupid decisions. And tell me a young person that hasn't made a stupid decision. Um, And then it's your mark for life when you learn a very steep lesson that these people aren't your friends, aren't going to support you, aren't, you know, they're the wrong people to mix with. What do you reckon, Sally? Well, I, I, you know, th- there is a theory that if you've uh, paid your debt to society, you know, that should be the end of it. And, and that rarely happens. I think there's, you know, I, what, what it's pretty easy to do that I think you may have been uh, thinking of, Jonathan, is that if you encounter um, copyright infringement uh, or trademark infringement, you can file a, a DMCA uh, yeah. form. And, and that will usually go through pretty much automatically and the, the stuff will be taken down. Um, but yes, the, the, it's a, a little different. You know, if, if someone is defaming you, that is pretty much supposed to be covered by, you know, laws about libel and, and slander. And then there's a, uh, a you know, you, you, you might get by with a, <clears throat> with a cease and desist letter, but you may have to sue and then that costs money and takes time and it's a, a real problem. And meanwhile, yes, the internet is, is forever. Uh, and, you know, I, the problems of having material that is true but not necessarily relevant anymore, that, yes, all right, this thing happened in the, the person's past. They, you know, they paid their dues for it. It, it should not be the first, certainly not be the first thing people see. Or, you know, versus things that are, are simply not true at all. Uh, but you know the the uh, the law in europe says that that in this case you know this man has a, a right to have that information uh, you know removed from search and uh, <clears throat> so that it, it should be and i think that's you know maybe not such a bad law because there was a you know there was a time when you would have to uh, go out of your way uh, to find that information unless it was something that you know there are specific things that at least in the u.s where you know if you are a registered sex offender you have to like yeah. let the police know and and that kind of thing but for something like this it probably really is just not relevant to to his uh, current life or to you know to what people can expect in their dealings with him yeah i'm gonna leave this now because um I think it's just as uh, you know. This is you know. This is all going to have to be worked out, and there's there's balances, and because there are things in the public domain that you shouldn't be able to remove, and I think with a specific area, specific like this, um, it's it's probably with some check and balances it is the right thing to do. And I don't understand why Google, but that's Google for you, you know. And we've had that discussion as well. On to the next story. Yes, I think they're resisting on principle rather than because of the specific case. I doubt there's any. I don't think they actually there's a, there is any humans left in Google. It's all artificial intelligence now, Sally. I don't. I think it's all a hive brain. There's no human in the Google offices. It's all a sham. <laughs> On to the next one. Uh, um, and I'm going to ask John to, start to uh, comment on this. And uh, what is truthful comment on this as well? Uh, um, well but, but, right. Blogger's Guide to Choosing the Perfect Niche. What did you think of this one, John? 
Well, it really seemed geared toward almost not really like choosing a niche, but like how can I monetize the niche? How can I make money off this blog? And, uh, you know, like this second half of the article is really, well, you can make money off your blog by, you know, having affiliate links for plugins and themes and hosting. And that's, uh, you know, kind of like the reason why half the people in the WordPress ecosystem blog at all uh, is to it just a means of dumping affiliate links in there. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, it, I think really, if you're going to... But there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Really? There's nothing... Hey, look, man. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, doing your hustle and making some green... That's great, but I think if you're gonna you can't really live on like fresh air, John, unlike me, I just live yeah. on air. You know, I'm, you I, know. I think there's a lot of ways to 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 make money. If you're gonna like niche down on anything, whether it's in blogging or video or uh, you know podcasting, it's got to be something that you care about. And if you're gonna actually try and make a legit business out of it. There has to be an end game to it. Like either you're going to sell a, a product or you're going to make affiliate commission or you're going to sell uh, a service that you do that's related to that. So, you know. yeah. What do you reckon? Adam? It's funny. It's funny that you say that, uh, John, because that was the exact thing that I was thinking. I'm like, the very first part of this should be saying, why, why, you got to answer the question, why do you want to do this in the first place? Do you want to do it because uh, it's an outlet for you for some uh, part of your personality or character? Uh, do you want to do it to help other people in some way and share your story? Do you want to do it? Like, why do you want to do this? They're only addressing you want to do this to make money. And that's actually just not the case. And actually, some some of the people that make the most money, if they would have started this with how can I make money, they would have never gotten to where they, they are. The most successful people got there because they made it from day one to not make money. That wasn't even in their mind, in their plan or anything. And then it just organically, the audience built and then they thought, wow, you know, I can, um, you know, maybe do this or that. Uh, so if your goal is not to make mo most people, it, it, and it doesn't need to be all about money too. And let me just throw this one little piece in here. There needs to be balance too. If you want to create some kind of blog or website or maybe a YouTube channel, I don't know. And you would eventually like to make some money. You've got to have balance in that too. You know, you've got to have balance. There needs to be a good chunk of your, like, dare I say, 80% of your content that doesn't have anything to do with anything for you. It's you serving your audience. Yeah. What do you reckon, Sammy? Well, uh, uh, yes, you know, it's it actually looking at this reminded me a bit of some uh, articles I read a, a lot of years ago about, you know, publishing a, a, a book if you were a, you know, consultant or a, a business person and, and, you know, to to search around and basically, you know, see where the demand was and see all that. Well, this is all, it's fine as far as it goes, but the thing is that if you're going to write a book or start a blog or anything like that, it does need to be like something you know about and something you care about uh, and to have more purpose than just to make money because people can tell uh, if you're not sincere and it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong with publicizing yourself through, you, you know, through, through what you're doing, but that can't be the only goal. You know, is your, your, the mission of your business is not simply to put money in the pockets of, of you know, you or, or your, shareholders you choose which business that you're in uh, in order to 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 achieve something uh, while you're there uh, making the money uh, and uh, so it's 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 just kind of silly uh, so it's sort of like okay well I it would be more helpful to have a, an article that said okay well you've chosen roughly a certain area like you know you're really passionate about you know food or uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, parenting or I'm or. I'm gonna say, Sally. I normally agree with you, but as you were saying this, I was thinking, yeah, you're partly right. But what about these social media celebrities on Snapchat that, you know, just have their lifestyle images 
and they got like a million. What what interests have they got? What what? Uh, well, you know, apparently the young people all want to be famous. But there was an article I saw recently from some young woman who who'd basically gotten herself into thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of debt trying to be one of these, uh, you know, Instagram celebrities showing off fashion and and so on and 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 so forth. I mean, you know, there are people who, yeah, it's like, oh, I want to be famous. I want to make money. I, I, I expect cash to rain on me out of the sky. And it does not actually work that way uh, I, I, very often that, that, you know, you at least need to start out, you know, uh, caring a, a, about fashion uh, and having some uh, some sense of it and then you know it's like well once you've decided yes this is this is the broad topic that i'm interested in then maybe the guidelines on choosing a niche within the area that you're passionate about and maximizing the the results you get in in terms of uh you know attracting and growing your your audience and and ways that you can then make money for it, it, it makes sense yeah, I think it's all kind of mixed up, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to go for my break and then back with some more stories, folks. Um, before I do go for the break, I want to talk about my major sponsor. <laughs> and I've got loads of affiliate links on the WP Tonic website. And that's Ginster Hosting. And um, I use it for the WP Tonic website. Been totally happy with them. One of the better moves going with Ginster, actually. Um and you know, I've never, not to interrupt you, I've never heard a bad thing about Kinsta. I, everyone on Facebook that I've ever bumped into that talks about hosting, and when the topic of Kinsta came up, it was like, Kinsta, 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 you know, that's the only place I would trust with my website, Kinsta. Thank you so much, Shadam. But no, also they've got Brian Jackson as their marketing director. That helps as well, because that guy is like a force of nature. Uh, um, I, I, the stuff he produces is amazing. So they made a good choice of their marketing director, Adam, uh, um, because he um, he punch you know they punch above their weight in a way. Uh, um, but um, back to it. Um, no, I've been totally happy, and I've got some of my client sites. And what I like about it is they've got similar features to some of the other well-known hosting um, WordPress hosting providers but they're not quite so dictatorial. They've got a stage inside. They've got a lovely UR um, interface as well. With um, um, If the site's down, they send you a little message. You know, I've been totally happy with it. And um, I can only say, go and have a look at them, folks. Um, go to the WP Tonic site. There's some banners, some links. They are affiliate links. So if you use those, you'll be supporting the show. And uh, I just think they're big enough to have all the technical stuff that you're looking for, but they're not so big that they don't care anymore. So I think it's a good balance with them. Go and have a look. And we're going for a break, folks, and we'll be back in a few moments to have another honest discussion about this week in WordPress. See you soon, folks. We're coming back. We've had a bit of a jolly discussion. Got a good, tight little panel here. We've been breezing through these stories quite effectively i feel uh on to the next one wordpress plugin looking for a new owner it's like a stray dog isn't it looking for a parent isn't it uh, uh anybody want to jump in on this one Uh, yeah, I uh, I sent this in, you know, it, it came across my feeds. I was catching up on my news yesterday. Uh, and so the creator of the CPT Onomies <coughs> uh, plugin, uh, who released it in 2012, uh, is looking for someone to uh, take it over. And uh, <coughs> listeners may remember that some months ago, there were a lot of discussions about cases where uh, someone had bought a plugin that was in the repo and then added uh, something uh, malicious uh, to it uh, and created a lot of, of trouble. And, you know, that the, the particular problem here was that, you know, previously this had been a trustworthy plugin and nobody had any reason to, to suspect that there would be problems. And so now if you're a plugin developer and you want someone to take over your, your plugin and you, you know, care about the community, uh, you have to uh, you know, vet any possible, uh, you know, purchasers or or just, you know, even volunteers who are, who would like to, to take on it. So yes, it's 
<clears throat> there's a paragraph toward the end that says, I will not give away ownership easily as I value the community too much. It's also by far my most popular plugin in the repo. There's sadly been a few occasions where folks have adopted out a plugin and the new owner clearly had an agenda and broke the rules. Ain't nobody got time with that. If you're interested, reach out and let's talk. Oh yeah, you don't want to, don't want to mess with her. She's been on the show as well. I interviewed the lady. Um, very, um, very interesting lady. Um, but you don't want to mess with Gerald. She just sort you out. Sure, sure. What do you reckon, Adam? What do you reckon about it? Because I, I think before I ask you a comment, Adam, I think it's like it's really linked to the theme story that we discussed in the first half of the show. Um, the whole way of this free plugins, premier plugins, the difference between the two, the whole way um, the plugin directory is being set up, I think it has some fundamental issues, doesn't it, Adam? Yeah, and the hard part is if you're someone that's new to yeah. using WordPress and you haven't been down that road where you get all excited, you find the perfect plugin and it happens to be free, um, uh, free to you, and you you start to depend upon it and then it just gets completely abandoned because it was just some kind of, I don't know. Um, so... It's a tough one. You know, I know for me over the, the years, I'm extremely cautious of which plugin uh, I will put on my website. I'll, I'll choose if there's a free one. A lot of times I'll even choose the paid one if there's a paid one because I have a, a maybe a reassurance that this might be um, supported down the line. Um, so I think it's, uh, I, I, you know what someone needs to do? Someone needs to just set up a website. Uh, someone in this group should just go set up a website where you can um, f find a new owner, you know, like uh, you can find a new owner for your pet. You can find a new owner for your pet project. Uh, That's because a, a, a dating site for uh, plug-in developers. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, it's it just uh, just thinks uh, the there's no good ending in these because you've got a plug in that. I mean, Ra Rachel, I'm sure she's a great girl. I, I don't know who would be motivated to take this. Right? There's not really a, 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 a an incentive other than being just a genuinely nice, giving, generous person to uh, take on a project like this. I don't I've, see. I've got, uh, I've got a positive way of dealing with this, actually. actually. Yes. A really straightforward, positive way of dealing with this. Um, I think um, just like the theme depository, um, I think if you've got premier, you should either have free or premier, right? And the premier go through a different system. They get their five star around security, around code quality right and um then you have some rating system that everybody would attempt to abuse but you have paid people in the system because it's been paid for this review by the premier plugin developer so you have actually paid people to keep the rules the best they can and they will do a better job than a load of part-time volunteers right but that there will be substantial attempts to abuse it because that's the human condition because there's big money involved right now with the prime with the free ones what you have in the foundation the fees that are generated through the premier themes and plugins go so much of that revenue go into the foundation and the foundation gives bursaries to plug-in developers that it's free that really benefit the WordPress community so they can maintain those plugins and have some form of income but it's it's a bursary that's how you deal with it Adam well yeah you know and that's where I mean there are certain plugins that a pods is a perfect example. If you go to pods where there's a benefit to pods being in existence, even though it's not marketed well. Um, and with pods, you have the WordPress foundation kicking them. I think it's WordPress foundation or maybe it's just WordPress.com supporting them financially. They have, and they have, they have a couple of, of uh, groups of people sponsoring them uh, to, to keep going. And that's certainly something to do. I think you also have the case where, okay, my, you know, my focus is shifting and 
I, you know, I really, I, I don't want to keep maintaining this, uh, but I know that lots of people use it and, and it should be, uh, you know, it, it should continue to be in existence. And that's what the idea of, you know, adopt a plugin is about, but I, it seems not to have um, worked very effectively so far. Yeah, but see, 4,000 active installs is really not that much, right? No. Like all those stories of, of, you know, plugins where someone bought it, you know, for that user base and they did something, it was add a zero and multiply it by three. And that was like, you know, a little bit more of a juice that was worth the squeeze. Uh, a lot of these small ones, the juice is just not worth the squeeze, Um it would what would be what would be really nice is if some of the similar plugins that do a similar thing would would have a, like a, a migrator or she would make a migrator where they could migrate over to that plugin um it, you know because this is just a custom post type maker right there's like probably you know I think the idea enough. is that you can use custom post types as custom taxonomies as a sort of way of of creating post relationships got yeah, it what do you reckon, John? What's your thoughts on this story? I'll just give you an anecdotal one. And, uh, you know, I have blog posts on my site, you know, from back, uh, you know, four or five years and just, you know, documenting things that I've used that have helped me. One of them was like a plugin called Add to Server. And uh, if you FTP'd up like stuff from your WP content, your, you know, images and stuff like that this would help you like add them to your media library still does so somebody wrote in um yeah they left a comment on my yeah but they left a comment on my blog i guess it was out of the repo for a minute and they said oh this just got removed you know maybe it was the security vulnerability and i kept checking back to that page and it was out for a couple of weeks and i guess it was the actual plugin author just said look the code in this, it just works, but it's really, you know, not actively maintained. It hasn't really super been actively maintained for, you know, five years. Uh, use it at your own risk. I just pulled it temporarily because I got tired of people like writing in one star reviews mm. for something. And that's what you're seeing a lot too. Like uh, another one, uh, post SMT or the postman SMTP. Somebody took that one over, um, and a lot of people were using that, but it just wasn't actively maintained. The, the, the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of plugins in the repo that are being maintained for free, and it just doesn't make economic sense for a lot of these creators to uh, you know, keep maintaining stuff for free. I mean, because they could be earning money you know, from paying work instead. I think it's something to consider, uh, and, and you're going to see a lot more of that as, as – you know, these things turn along. So I do think it would be good to, you know, have some sort of service where um, people who are looking for someone to take over their plugin could pass it off to somebody to where things are actively maintained and the integrity is maintained. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's all right. Uh, I've, but it is a difficult situation because it's not only the financial thing, it's like what you've just said and Sally, you know, developers just get a bit tired of a of a project don't they yes well it's you know i think a lot of people will they'll put a plug in in the repo partly because well you know i had a use for this and i created it you know created it for for that and maybe somebody else would find it useful and then i think also there are people who are who do it because they're kind of trying to establish themselves uh, but then once you get established uh, that plugin becomes more of a drain on you than a, than a benefit. But, you know, perhaps it would be of use for someone else who is a relatively new developer to kind of take it over, get used to, you know, what's involved with that, uh, you know, help, you know, build their contribution to the community and then, you know, a, a <clears throat> you know, eventually probably move on to, to something else. I know there were, you know, there have been some cases where there was an attempt to keep things going, done, 
you know, because, oh, this is something a lot of people use and we need something like this. And, you know, so far nobody else has, has developed a similar plugin, which is pretty unusual. I mean, it's, it's very rare that there's only one plugin that does something. But it did happen when, uh, when PodPress was discontinued before PowerPress had really come along and there was an attempt to keep it alive. And uh, that didn't work so much. And, you know, now there are uh, a, a few uh, good functional, you know, well-maintained uh, podcasting uh, plugins and it, it doesn't matter so much. But, uh, you know, I, I think if... Uh, you know, something that had, you know, 5 million installs, uh, you know, somebody would be found to, to, to take that over. And of course, they'd have much more um, personal motivation to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's also the, you know, the more people are using it, the greater the support demand. Yeah, I think I personally, you know, any kind of core functionality um, that I'm relying on a plugin if it's really, really important, um, I'm very reluctant to use a free plugin because um, I know at some stage the developer's going to get burnt out if it's a popular one. They're just going to have a load of support tickets and how can they make, how can they do it? They just cannot, you know. Um, so I'm a bit there are some that continue for years that are free that are still used because um yeah let me say let me say the last thing on this if you are dependent upon one of these plugins and the developer obviously you know they've got to go and feed their family you know they can't sit there and you know spend 10 hours a day doing everything for free as long as there's a way to reach them and there's some problem or something you need solved, just offer them a hundred or two hundred dollars. Send it to them. Can I give you two hundred dollars? Can you can you do this for me? I'm sure a lot of them will take it. In fact, I'm doing something like that right now with pods, where I want something specifically built. They do not have the money. They do not have the budget. They do not have the bandwidth. I'll pay them a thousand dollars or whatever it's going to take to build this and then put it in the repo. Um, uh, and I'll even market it for them uh, because I want it for me and I want it for other people too because I think there's value. So money talks. Well, and, and you know, the, the thing that you said about, you know, preferring to use a paid plugin is, yeah, you know, because there's a higher likelihood that the people will be around and, and able to support it in the, in the future if they're making money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think I'm going to end it now. I've got a couple more stories, but I don't want it going over... I know we started a little bit later. What do what you reckon? Shall we end it now or shall I throw in another story? That's right, Jonathan. Just end it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think it's probably safe for us to wrap up. Thank you. Uh, you cracked me up there. Uh, um, Sally, how, how can people find you? You can find me at wpfangirl.com, at eastbaywp.com, or I am at Sally Getch on Twitter. And you've got the most affectionate cats on the internet. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I swear this is going to be like my fallback um, I, and my fallback uh, earning plan is is to sell uh, people, you know, video time with my cat. <laughs> Very, very wise. Uh, Adam, how can people find out more about what you are up to? Well, actually, here, let me tell you, some of you guys might already know this. I know John knows this, but uh, you can see my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash WP Crafter. But last Sunday, uh, I hit a milestone on the channel that I'm very excited about, happy, grateful, humbled, and all that. I hit 50,000 YouTube subscribers, but it's funny. These things just, it's a snowball, right? You know, <laughs> so I'm looking at it. Let's, okay, so that was Sunday. Uh, today is 50,705. It just grows so stinking fast. It's like a thousand new subscribers per week, but it's such a huge blessing. But I have over 300 videos there all about WordPress. I'm going to have a real exciting one today about page builders biting the dust. And I, I, I'm going to try to find a, a version of another one bites the dust where I won't get a copyright strike, um, uh, but that should be fun. Yeah, what do you think they are going to do? I'll, I'll leave that till next week. We'll have to have a discussion. Oh, I think that. the page builders are going to turn into basically custom block developers. 
Yeah, they're oh. drop. Well, it was, it, and this is another story for next week. But a page builder from WPMU Dev, they just scrapped it. You know, and it was kind of nice. No one used it, <laughs> but they probably scrapped it along with significant money. Yeah, well, that's how it goes, doesn't it? John, how can people find out more about you, John Locke? Well, definitely, <clears throat> definitely you can find me at my website, which is lockdowndesign.com. Something, uh, and th this is separate from Adam, I'm not trying to write on this, but like I've been posting a lot on, on YouTube like recently too. I've been getting back into this. So um, I'm trying to post like every couple or two to three days there. So if you're looking for SEO tips, I'm just talking about SEO practical advice. Um, so go check that out. Um, I, the user channel uh, just search for John J. Lock or Lockdown Design should come up. So yeah, I'd appreciate a subscribe. Yeah, do that. How do people uh, get a hold of you? <laughs> oh, it's really easy. It's through the WP Tonic website. It's through the Facebook page, and I'm on Twitter as well. I've got an announcement, folks. Um, Nick, next Wednesday, um, which will be the 18th. Um, we're at eight around nine a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We've got a great um, live interview with Rand Riskin of Moss, the former CEO of Moss. He's coming on for a WP Tonic detailed interview. Um, Dish and dirt. <laughs> no, I don't, well, it'll be an interesting discussion. He seems to be up for it. Uh, um, it's going to be a great discussion. You'll be able to watch it live on the Facebook page. And if you've got any questions, you'll be able to put those onto the page. And my other co, my normal co-host is also going to be joining us, Kim. She's going to be monitoring those questions. And we will be putting those questions to Mr. Rand. And um, it's a great opportunity to um, interact with a bit of a hero of mine i think rand's one of those guys that's always um a quality i would call him old-fashioned word a quality individual he's he, he's managed to be really successful and um, kept himself um, struggling for the right words but hopefully you can understand what i'm trying to express um he's just one of those people that i've learned a lot from and I just think he's a quality individual, and I'm really looking forward to this interview. So join us at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on next Wednesday, and on the Facebook, the WP Tonic show page, and you'll be able to watch that interview. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, if you're also feeling really generous, give us a review on iTunes because it does really help the show and it allows more people to um, listen and watch our discussion. And we'll be back next week with a great panel with a great group of stories and it's just a fun show. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Bye, everyone.